that you are going to be hugely rewarded mm. in the sense that it's going to be hugely multiplied. Allah says, mm -hmm. he, Allah takes direct responsibility. Mm -hmm. You know, like in the well, modern government governance system, mm -hmm. sometimes there are portfolios that the president of the republic take direct responsibility. Mm -hmm. They are under his office. On the, on the, on the, yeah. Ramadan also, mm -hmm. by analogy, Ramadan comes under Allah's portfolio. It's under the office of Allah. Direct. Mm -hmm. He takes direct responsibility. He rewards directly. And whatever single, if the butu that you give is going to be multiplied. Mm -hmm. And that is why if you are not careful, if you are, not, if you are, if you are careless not to gain so much in Ramadan, mm -hmm. I think uh, loser. Somebody, something must be wrong with you. Yeah. Uh, doctor, my last question before we go for our first break is, uh, what is the prophetic tradition mm -hmm. you know, in the issue of sighting the moon? Because this is a major problem in this country, yeah. especially among those in the hinterland. Yeah. And in those in the metropolis here, yeah, yeah. you know, the mm. urban, urban Gambia and rural mm. Gambia, yeah. you know, the different schools of, you yeah. know, taught. You taught, not even necessarily schools, also, but the households. Yeah, okay, households. Yeah, yes, 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 Islamic households, you understand? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. yeah, so what is the, what is the Sunnah? What is the Sunnah, what basically? You know, the Hadith, the hadith of, 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 of citation of the moon mm -hmm. Uh, definitive. If you read Sahih al Bukhari, Muslim, the Quran, al Islam, the Quran, Quran al Karim, well, forget about Quran. Quran is, is uh, if we were to refer to Quran and Sunnah, there would not have been problems. But even the book, the very, the very sources that we refer to, mm -hmm. all sources, are very clear. This is Fiqh al Islam mm -hmm. or you have al uh, al Kafi Fiqh al Madinah for the Malikis. This is for the Hanafis, for instance. There are books for the Shafis. There are the, the, in the old Islamic sources, the rules are very clear. Ramadan becomes due when the moon is sighted. When the moon is sighted? On the 29th of Shaban. Okay. If the, if the moon is sighted on the, on the 29th of Shaban, Ramadan has come. Okay. Or if it has not been sighted anywhere, then you complete Shaban 30 days. Because in the Islamic um, um, uh, muna, uh, lunar, lunar calendar, calendar is either 29 days mm -hmm. or 30 days. Okay. And while interpreting the different the different hadith that comes under uh, 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 this issue, mm -hmm. uh, there are some differences emerge. Some differences emerge. There are ulama who say that every religion are bound by their own citation, or their own sight in the moon. There are ulama, and for the end of the Malikis, like we're here in West Africa and North Africa, uh, the Malikis say that people of different regions that are adjacent together, once the moon is sighted in one region, others will follow. But provided that the distance among the regions is not like that of Hijaz, that is Saudi today, and Andalus, Spain. Give that example here, for example. Okay. Like, like the example here, if we were to apply this rule, uh, the whole of West Africa can fast together, West and North Africa, they can fast together and break their fast together if the moon is sighted in one of the regions, the regions or the countries. The whole of West Africa and the whole of North Africa. North Africa combined. What of if Saudi sees the moon? Okay, if Saudi sees the moon now, this is what I was coming to say. In the opinion of some of the ulama, by this rule, they are not bound. But you know, also mind you, there's a difference between not being bound and not being able to do. Saudi is the leader of the Islamic world. It's, the, it's occupying a living position. If the moon is sighted in Saudi, and people say, I want to fast with Saudi, they are free to fast with Saudi. It will not cause any problem. So, but if but they people want to, are not, they are not bound. They are not bound. By virtue of this rule, particularly with the Malikis, mm. they are not bound. And okay. for other ulama too, they are not bound. Okay. They are not bound to fast with the Saudis, although they can fast with the Saudis. But they, they, they can fast with them to... There's nothing wrong with that, yeah. but they are not bound. Okay. And this has to be very, very, very specifically clear. But my point I want here is not to fast with Saudi or fasting or not to fast with Saudi. My problem here is these differences of, uh, among the ulama, these juristic differences existed for ages. Islam is how many years today, Abu Bakr? 1,400 and something. For almost 1,500 years. years. Yeah. Right from the time of, 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 of the Sahabas. Even the Holy Prophet. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It has never be, been an issue among the Muslims. Even where they are, they are not fasting together or they are, being, they are fasting together. Because they know that they are, the rules are there and the rules are flexible. It has never been a source of confusion. It has never been a source of conflict. It has not, never been a source of, so, 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 a, a source of infighting mm -hmm. or, or enmity. 
So if people in the Congo still refuse to fast, where people uh, 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 are fasting, but the people in the Jairas or the Basia area are not fasting, it's, this, this used to happen. It is a simple issue. There's no need for one group to go out calling the other group a kufar, non-Muslims, non -Muslims, insulting them, creating confusion among the Muslims. This is my problem. Because this has never been the case before. And if you talk about Sunnah, following the Sunnah of the Prophet وسلم, and following the companion, the Sahabas, mm -hmm. عنهم, why don't we follow this? Okay. So why do we have to hide behind this to you know, create unnecessary tension? Yeah, but now, now another question here. <coughs> Islamically, is there any virtue mm -hmm. in following the majority? majority of the Muslims well you, say, you know you know Abu Bakr you know the one of the one of the uh, definitive sources of Sharia mm -hmm. is what they call Tawatu or Jumhur Ulama when the majority of Ulama take a particular ruling sometimes you know, it can become binding so the majority of Ulama majority of Ulama applying all the rules of uh, uh, interpretation and deduction of, of, of rules from the sources, they can sit down together and create certain measures and policies, and others are bound to follow. So in other words, what I want to say, it is entirely in the spiritual, legal, and moral interest of everybody to go with the majority. Okay. You understand? Spiritually is important. Legally, it's important because there is because of the fact that their opinion can sometimes become a source of law, a source of policy, and directives. Okay. So it is therefore in the interest of every one of us to go with the majority. As an independent scholar, mm -hmm. Dr. Sengon, mm -hmm. a landed independent well, I'm scholar. Not independent from Sherry. Let me let me come. Let me come. <laughs> As an independent scholar, mm -hmm. what advice will you give to the Super Summit Council, being the leading body, mm -hmm. you know, that everybody should follow in this country? Yeah. Because. They are the they, they represent the Muslim community yeah, in this yeah, country, yeah, yeah. and they are they are bound to be followed. Yes, it is it is it yes. is the duty of everybody yeah. to follow them, yeah. you know, towards guidance. Exactly. Now, what 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 word of wisdom do you have for yeah, them I before we take this break? I like that idea because mm -hmm. usually I advise people to follow the Islamic Council. I said it from the very beginning today mm -hmm. that let's listen to the Islamic Council. I listen to the Islamic Council, and I advise people to listen to the Islamic Council because it's an umbrella organization. So we owe it to Islam, we owe it to the Ummah to respect and listen to the Islamic Council. But also the Islamic Council owes it to all of us to understand, and I'm sure they do because you have uh, uh, seasoned ulama leading the council, and they do understand that there are differences among the scholars. This is one of the areas where you have differences. But like I said, it has never been an issue. So therefore, let's make sure that it let takes time. Let the council make sure that, that, that these issues are handled mm -hmm. in a very diplomatic way and in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a in a in a in a in a very strategic way so that they would lead to conflict and start sensitization now that's the right word that you are saying sense, in fact i think the problem is sensitization if mm -hmm. if, the, if, it, if it is a policy of the council that all muslims should be fasting together and breaking the fast together which i should agree with mm -hmm. all of us should agree with that that should be the policy of the council but but why it is difficult let's be confused mm -hmm. it is difficult mm -hmm. then then what should what we should do strategically speaking is to make sure that we sensitize people. And this process can take ages. It needs a lot of wisdom, a lot of diplomacy, strategic diplomacy. Sometimes you go to instances where, in fact, when you call people, they won't listen to you. They can even insult you. Mm -hmm. But who are you? Mm -hmm. Prophet Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. They were throwing stone, stone on him. Yeah. He was patient. Mm -hmm. People did all sorts of bad things to him, but he was patient, yeah. he was careful, he was patient, he was diplomatic, he was very strategic and very wise. Mm -hmm. Eventually, Islam has come today the fastest growing way of life. Mm -hmm. There's no point, there's no way that this way of life can be brought down by, by mankind. In fact, funnily enough, interestingly enough, anytime they attack Islam, the Islam it takes off again. Yeah. It becomes more popular. That's what Allah says. That's what Allah, Allah says. Allah said al yeah. So then, then, therefore, it is important for all of us, not only the council, for all of us as uh, propagators or, um, or you know, promoters of our religion, uh, like Al Quran says, "Udo ila sabil Rabbi kabil hikmati wal muhsinat al hasana." Okay. I, you I, need okay. wisdom. Mm -hmm. You need lang. You be careful with the language that you use. The language has to be soft. It has to be diplomatic. It has to be strategic. And the language doesn't have to. <coughs> 